Hey, how's it going guys? I hope that this video finds you well as always. Uh, in this video, we are going to focus on the topic of taxonomy and classifications. So the objective for this specific unit is going to be to be able to categorize organisms using a hierarchical classification system based on similarities and differences shared among groups. And when we talk about groups, we basically talk, we're talking about groups of organisms. Uh, the language objective is to be able to analyze the characteristics of each organism and classify them according to their taxa. We want to learn what taxa is today. Uh, if you want to make this into an essential question, just to make sure that we have that written down in our Cornell notes, this is what we need to be able to do by the end of the class, basically. Can I analyze the characteristics of each organism and classify them according to their tax set. So we're going to practice this uh, in an, on an assignment, but for now, make sure that you focus on this objective. So what is this all about? Well, I want to start you off with this specific question. I want you to all tell me what name would you give to this organism? Now, if you uh, speak Spanish, for those of you who uh, speak Spanish, you would probably say that the answer here is D, right? Well, but I can tell you that all of these are actually correct because these are old names for the common dog that we know. So Chin, this was also a name for dog. It's just, uh, I believe this is French. Um, I don't know what this one is, but I do know that this one is uh, German for dog. Uh, and this is the idea of um, this topic. Sometimes we give common names to organisms and it can make things a lot more complicated, especially for scientists. If they're talking, trying to talk about the same organism, well, they use different names for that organism. It can make things a lot more complicated and confusing. Now, it will be a lot easier if, uh, especially in the scientific community, we use the names for organisms that are common to one another. So we do give the name for a dog to be Canis uh, lupus. And I just happen to know that one. So this is kind of how you would write the name for the dog in uh, the scientific naming system. So. This is just another example. What are these called? Um, a lot of people call them light bugs or uh, fireflies. I mean, there's many names and they're going to vary from region to region, country to country. But the idea is that by using a, a uh, common name, this is going to bring a lot of confusion. Well, what do you do for that? You will basically have a scientific name that is going to be used for everybody. And we normally use a Latin name for this. I'm going to see why later on. So taxonomy, it is the system for biological uh, of biological groups and names for organisms based on shared characteristics. And whenever we say uh, taxa or taxon, basically we're talking about groups. Taxa is the plural, means groups. Uh, taxon is the singular, so basically the word group. Um, and this is how we like to classify organisms according to different groups or, or the characteristics that they have. Like we know we have a group or a taxa for kingdoms, which basically separates organisms in six different kingdoms. This one, Monera here, uh, we need to make sure that we understand the difference between uh, Archaea and Eubacteria, by the way. But this is just a system that we use. Um, this we use it in the, you know, very commonly used. Um, if you go to I don't know, Walmart to buy some uh, a TV, you will probably go to the technology um, department. Uh, if you want to buy kitchen supplies, you will go to the kitchen department. If you want to buy, I don't know, toys uh, for your little brothers and sisters, well, you'll go to the toys department. So we like to classify things uh, based on their similarities. And the same things happens with organisms. We like to classify them based on what uh, characteristics they share in common. So why do we need to do this? Well, it, it makes it easier to study the relationship between organisms. Um, in many cases, it's going to show how these species are going to behave with one another. Um, this one is important here. It makes it easier to identify new organisms if you already have a classification system in place. If you discover a new organism, right away it takes almost no time for scientists to uh, figure out what specific group they're going to put it in and then they give that organism a name. And we, every single year, we discover new species. So uh, is it permanent? Well, classifications can always change. 
depending on new discoveries. And this is important. A lot of times we make new discoveries about organisms and then we realize that perhaps we had it wrong the first time or maybe we um, discover new ways that we can classify them or separate them further more and then we basically change the system a little bit. Uh, the idea is that this is not a uh, you know sort of fit system it is something that is sometimes changing a little bit. So who do we owe this work to? Well the scientists that did a lot of work for this is his name is Carlos Linnaeus and Carlos Linnaeus is basically the uh, founder, the creator of the classification system that we know of today as the basis for a modern taxonomic uh, system for all life form. He's the one that basically created these different taxonomic systems. He's um, the founder father for uh, taxonomy. Um, and this is what he uses, okay? This is how we use it nowadays. So we classify them based on these uh, groups here, this taxa. We have kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, uh, genus, and the more specific one is the species. So one thing that I want to uh, want you to notice is that I use this upside down uh, pyramid and right here at the top is basically where things or organisms are going to have uh, a lot of shared characteristics and as you move down the classification system you notice that it gets smaller and smaller and smaller which means that you're getting more specific in those characteristics. And one thing also that I want you to know is that since you have to remember that specific order that they go into, there's a way that I like to use for you to remember it. So I like to use the words King Philip came over for good soup. Okay, this is how I kind of have to remember it for a very long time. And every time I say in my head, King Philip came over for good soup, right away, I use those words. You know, use the K for kingdom, the P for phylum, the uh, C for class, O for order, F for family, um, G for genus, and S for uh, species. So if you remember this, King Philip came over for good soup, this is a way that you can remember the specific order that they go uh, to. Uh, so quick question that I wanted to ask you, what do you notice about the taxa as you go from kingdom to species? And again, I hope that your answer is you're getting more and more and more specific as you move up. Now, one thing that I want to mention though, and I hope that this doesn't confuse you, is that yes, you are getting more specific in terms of characteristics, but in terms of the number that we have, like for example, we know that we have six kingdoms, we have uh, perhaps hundreds of phylum, we have perhaps thousands of classes, we have hundreds of thousands of orders. Um, we have close to millions of families. Um, three, four, five, six. And you can use this to say all the way up here to where we have about 8.5 million uh, organisms or million um, species of organisms. So as you go up, yes, you're getting more and more and more specific uh, as so you're going from broad characteristics to more specific characteristics of organism, but the number that you have of those are greater, right? There are more species of organisms than there are kingdoms of organisms. All right, so uh, just a quick question that I can ask you about this. If you two organisms are the same order, they mo mo must also be in the same, and the answer here is kingdom, okay? So this is how you want to approach that type of question. You can Basically, do your um, upside down pyramid. You can draw up that right there where I told you that they share the same order, and then you draw a um, vertical line all the way down. And basically, all the places where that vertical line touches the pyramid, those are the things that that organism will share in common. If they're outside the pyramid, they're not going to be shared in common between them. So, this is a great example that I have here. This is two different species of snakes and they share the same kingdom they share the same phylum they say share the same class they share the same order but since they're two different types of snakes now they're going to be different families of snakes they're going to be different genuses of snakes and they're going to be different species of snakes 
So if they share the same order, that means that they're going to share the same class, they're going to share the same phylum, they're going to share the same kingdom. Perhaps they don't share the same family, they don't share the same genus or the same species. Okay? So how we use, uh, how are we going to classify species basically um, or identify them? We use Linnaeus's two word name system. And that is what we call binomial nomenclature system. This is basically a system that we use to identify the names or give names to organisms and it ident uh, identifies specific species. The first word is always going to be the genus of that specific organism and the second word will always be the species or uh, epithet for that specific organism. Now, in case of Homo sapien, you see here it says Homo, that is the genus, sapien, that is the species. Okay, and a little bit more information. We use Latin language to name organisms. And the reason is because this is a universal language. There's no longer uh, a language that is spoken in the world. So since it is a language that is no longer spoken, that means that it no longer changes. And so um, we use it to name organisms. Uh, it is a, the way that we write these uh, names, though, uh, we have to make sure that we italicize in print we if we're going to write it down or handwrite it we need to make sure that we underline it you're going to capitalize the genus and you need to make sure that you put the species in lowercase so we need to remember this okay it's important to remember so how what would be the best name or how would you write the name for homo sapien this is just a quick easy example uh, obviously the answer is this one capitalize uh, genus lowercase species okay and it's all italics uh, so there's another example what will be the best answer here and obviously you should be looking at those letters this is not even italicized this is italicized but capital there so you want to make sure that that matches so all italicized ca capital genus lowercase species okay some more questions that you can answer from this, like for example, if I show you some more organisms here and I ask you, what is the scientific name for a mosquito? Well, you can say that mosquito here, the scientific name would be the genus and the species. So Aedes fichi would be the name of the specific mosquito. Uh, is the lake Dar uh, Darner closer related to the mosquito or the Canadian goose. Well, let's look at the uh, Canadian goose right here. And here's the Lake Darner. Are they more closely related to the mosquito or to the Canadian goose? And we can see that they share, these two share the same uh, kingdom, they share the same phylum, the same class. Now they share three things in common basically. So this is one, two, and three. And if we look at this one right here, they share the same kingdom, they share the same phylum, and they do not share the same class. So there's only two things that they share in common. Whoops, kind of went back a little. Again, three things here, two things there that they share in common. So that means that the lake, the owner, and the mosquito are more closely related to one another because they share more things with one another, they share three things with one another. Um, which classification level is the broadest? Again, your answer should be kingdoms as the broadest species is the more specific as we go down. Uh, which, um, the last question is probably not on, it's not gonna be visible, but it says which two species are most closely related? And that's something that you can just stop the video and look for, all right? Um, a little bit of common names, they can be very misleading, like seahorse, you know, sea and horse, or butterfly, you know, butter and fly. It's better to use a common name uh, for organisms that is going to be easy to use. So uh, it makes it easier for the scientific community, basically, to use that name. Now, I want to go over the dichotomous key, and then I'm going to show you guys uh, a separate video that will go over how to read a dichotomous key. So a dichotomous key is basically a chart used to identify organisms based on their given 
characteristics or trait and again i will show you a different video so i'm going to go ahead and stop this one here and i'll see you in the next one